Hey guys, Dan with Warpaint JKU. This is gonna be a quick part two episode of the alignment series. Uh, the first episode I talked to you guys about setting toe and how to adjust your drag link to center your steering wheel and why some of those things are important, especially on a newer Jeep. Um, in this one, we're gonna talk about caster angle. Now, caster angle can get a little bit complicated. Setting it is very easy, but what you set it to, based on how your vehicle is built, is gonna change. Um, so we're gonna talk about some of those things. Really simply, caster angle is the amount of angle that you have in your axle, okay? So is your axle rolling forward towards the front of the vehicle or backward toward the rear? Typically, the goal and if your Jeep was stock, you would want six degrees back toward the back of the vehicle. Now, it's very easy to measure. I will link to a tool in the description of this video that you can use for that. There's a lot of different ones out there. I'll just show you the one that I use that I've had good success with. But here's the idea. So imagine looking at the side of your axle, driver side, passenger side, doesn't matter. For this example, we're gonna talk about the driver side. So let's pretend you're looking at the side of your axle and you're looking at your C on the side of your axle. So if we have your ball joint up here, right? We have your C underneath it, your ball joint comes through the bottom, behind it, it comes down, you have your axle tube, and then you have the same thing on the bottom where your ball joint comes through. Okay, let's pretend this is your axle, right? You'd have your knuckle mounted to this. You'd have your, your disc brake would be, would be on this, your tire, your lugs, everything would bolt to this. So let's pretend this is the side. Now, what caster angle is, is let's say again, if this is the driver's side, this is the front of the Jeep over here, F for front, this is the back of the Jeep over here, you want it leaning backwards six degrees. Now, your lower control arm attached to the bottom of your axle tube and your upper control arm attached to the top are gonna be what determines that. So, to put it simply, if you don't have adjustable control arms, you cannot change your caster angle at all, okay? Your vehicle from the factory at stock lift height was designed with a Dana 44 or a Dana 30 to run at six degrees caster. Now, six degrees caster is great. That's even the goal that you wanna shoot for when you're running something like a Super Duty Dana 60. Their factory set to six degrees. Leaning it back those six degrees um, allows it your steering wheel to want to want to self correct and self center right so like when you make a turn and then you let go of the steering wheel after the turn it'll it'll kind of find its way back to the wheels pointing straight much easier than if your axles rolled forward and you don't have as much caster the other thing that caster does is make it stable driving down the highway okay so again it tracks straight um, and it doesn't wander all over the road almost like it has a mind of its own the problem that people get into with Jeeps, especially Jeeps with lift kits on them, is that the factory axle, okay, does not have enough separation between the pinion angle and your C on the side. There's only six degrees of separation. Now, real quick, let me explain what that is because this is where it gets kind of fuzzy and complicated out there on the interweb. So for the purpose of trying to make this as simple as possible for everyone to really understand why six degrees and what degrees of separation are, I kind of redrew our drawing here. This dotted line through the center simulates uh, or simulates 90 degrees, okay? So this is basically directly vertical to the ground. That's 90 degrees. Um, this C, I drew leaning backwards just a little bit. Again, this is your axle tube looking straight at the driver's side, your lower C, your upper C. Um, that's where your ball joints would sit, that's where your knuckle would bolt to, all that kind of stuff. Your C leaning back a little bit at six degrees on a factory JK Dana 44 or Dana 30 front axle makes your pinion, okay, the part back here that attaches to your front drive shaft also 90 degrees, right? It's, it's completely horizontal to the ground. Um, that's the six degrees of separation. When this is at six, this is at 90. Now that's perfect, okay, 
for a factory setup at a factory lift height. But as we talked about in other videos on my YouTube, as soon as you start to lift the vehicle without adjustable control arms, what that's going to do is as your control arms, as your control arms, right, which basically you have your, you have your lower and then you have your, your upper, as you, as you lift the vehicle, it raises those control arms and it pulls the axle forward. It, it, it rolls the axle forward. When you roll it forward, that's when you get that wandering sensation on the road. You're constantly making little corrections. It's just not going to drive nice. So what people do to, to help with that is they wind up getting an adjustable control arm. Okay. Now, adjustable control arms work to an extent. As soon as you lift your vehicle kind of high, your front drive shaft is really short, okay? So again, there, there's a lot that goes into this, which is why it's its own video. I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible. But your factory front drive shaft is, is very short. And the problem is the higher you lift it, the more of an angle that drive shaft gets. And your factory front drive shaft does not like steep angles, okay? And because it's so short, it gets real steep real quick. So you have to go with an aftermarket front drive shaft. If you're typically like three and a half inches of lift seem to be about the limit. If you keep it under three and a half, you should be okay for a while, unless you're really flexing it out a lot. You go above three and a half at three and a half, you need a new front drive shaft pretty fast, even if you're not flexing it out. Now the new front drive shafts do some fancy stuff with joints on this side to help with the angle. I'm not gonna get totally into that. It's again, a whole nother video, but what that allows you to do is roll this axle again after it's lifted with those adjustable control arms to get it closer to that six degree mark so it drives closer to factory. The problem guys with a Dana 44, Dana 30 factory axle is that six degrees of separation like I just talked about, okay? There is no way on a, on a, on a lifted Jeep, uh, three and a half, four and a half inches, um, I wouldn't go higher than four and a half, but some people do. There is no way you're going to get it back to six degrees and have that front drive shaft be happy, even with an aftermarket front drive shaft. When you droop your suspension, it's going to start to bind in some cases. Uh, you're going to get drive shaft vibration driving down the highway. Uh, it, the angle can, in fact, be so steep, and it happens pretty quickly, that it can put a lot of undue stress on that output shaft on the front of your transfer case where that the other end of the drive shaft connects that it actually wears the bearing out in your transfer case and then that winds up being a very expensive repair. So what people do is they roll the axle intentionally a little bit forward and they kind of find that happy balance of enough drivability but taking the stress off the front drive shaft. I at four and a half inches when I still was running my Dana 44s, I found that anywhere around three degrees or so was the happy medium. Um, it wandered a little bit on the road. It was a little bit tougher to drive in a straight line. You really didn't want to take your eyes off the road all that long because it would drift. Um, but I had a ton of droop. I had a ton of flex. I didn't have any driveline vibration. It wasn't abusing my transfer case and everything was happy. Um, that's where aftermarket axles or even a Super Duty swap come into play. Let's check it out. As you guys know, this is a Super Duty Dana 60 out of a 2011 F250 or F350. In my case, it's out of an F250, but it doesn't matter, they're the same axle. Um, this axle actually has 10 degrees of separation between the angle of your C by your, by your ball joints, right? The angle of that C and the angle of the pinion that connects to your front drive shaft. So you're able to get that six degrees and still have enough, uh, enough angle on your drive shaft to make everything happy and make everything work as if it was designed to work that way at a factory lift height, but on a lifted vehicle. Aftermarket Dana 44s, aftermarket Dana 60s, they all typically have about 10 degrees of separation versus the factory six degrees. Now, let's get down to measuring and how we figure out the caster angle and then how we set the caster angle. We are looking at the driver side wheel. Now, in order to set caster angle, you're gonna wanna do this with the tire on the vehicle and the vehicle sitting on the ground. I never do it like this. This would never work. It would never give you an accurate way of doing it. I'm only doing it like this to give you an easier view of where you put your tool. 
Now the tool you're gonna need is a digital angle finder. This is the one that I use, it's made by Klein. I just picked it up on Amazon. I'll link to it in the description, but there are many others. You're gonna to wanna to turn the tool on and you're gonna to wanna to set it on a flat surface directly under the axle um, because just minor variations in the pavement or in your garage floor will affect your caster angle settings. You're gonna to wanna to do the exact same thing when you move to the other side of the vehicle because you have to do it on both sides. Now, once it's zeroed out, you're gonna come back up to the top and you're either you're gonna to try to find a flat spot on top of your C to set it down. I have one on this Super Duty Dana 60 right behind the ball joint, so I normally set it down right there and it gives me a reading. Loosen the jam nut on your upper control arm and adjust them to roll your axle forward or backwards and just watch that number and watch it change. And when you get it set to where you want it set, you lock down, you tighten up those lock nuts, you go to the other side, do the same thing, and there you have it. It's a very simple idea, it's a very simple process. You do it on both sides of the axle and you're done. The, the biggest thing, okay, is to know what to set it at. There's a lot of speculation and a lot of confusion out there on the internet, and like I said before, I know what worked for me. Now, on a stock axle, I'll say it one more time, on a stock axle, stock Dana 44, stock Dana 30 in the front, they're both the same, depending upon the lift height. I, at a four and a half inch lift, had mine set at three degrees, and again, it wandered. I didn't have the best drive quality, but I wasn't putting the stress on my axle, on my, uh, on my drive shaft, and I wasn't um, having any sort of issues on road. It wasn't bad enough for me to really be overly concerned, but it did wander, okay? And the only way to really fix that, guys, even with an aftermarket front drive shaft, is to get an aftermarket front axle that has more separation between that pinion angle and the C on, on the side where your wheel bolts to. It is the only way to get it to like where I have it set, um, at, you know, at about six degrees, five, six degrees, and not have the driveline vibration and have everything be happy even when you're drooped out, no binding, all that kind of stuff. But guys, there you have it, okay? That's part two. Um, get out there, turn a wrench, check out the description for a link to that tool, and uh, thanks for tuning in. You guys have any, any questions, any, anything, just drop a comment, hit that like and subscribe, and uh, more videos coming. Thanks, guys.